goal here today is to assemble a Renard Plus TR24. Uh, the one here, I'll back it up so you can get a focusing on it, is a Radiant Holidays kit. Keep in stock here at Radiant Holidays. I'm going to peel off the packaging here. Now, one, as you're peeling this off, uh, keep your finger on this transformer. It is not soldered in. It is simply there to keep it from moving around and, and scratching the PCB. Uh, we'll peel this edges off here. This plastic is a lot tougher than it looks. It needs to be that way because of all the sharp edges we have inside the package. I'm holding the transformer. We're going to slide this off so the parts stay and you flip it over on the back. Uh, you'll see the piece of cardboard that protects the transformer pin. Just remove that, toss it away. The transformer will pull right off. You can take it, put it off to the side. First step is to inspect the PCB in the kit. Many of the more troublesome troubleshooting techniques we run into are damaged traces on the, on the PCB. So one of the things you like to do is to, to take a good look at the whole PCB. What you're looking for are scratches, broken parts, cracks, and such other things. One of the things you can do is to get it into the light. I don't know if we can see this. Oh, there you go, right there. You see how it shines? A uh, very nice way of seeing deep scratches. Surface scratches are okay but not something that actually takes it and severs the trace underneath. Uh, see if we can get that same view here. There you go. The same view, shiny right across the board. Thing is, that looks pretty good here. So, PCB is okay. Over here, bring out our package of parts. And continue to open this pack up. And this is actually a good one. Every once in a while, you notice this is a shrink bag here. Uh, sometimes the part, the, the shrink bag actually sticks to the part, so it won't damage anything, but just watch it, slowly remove it, uh, it'll pop. If it breaks a hole in something, just notice which compartment the parts came from. And there we go. Now, the, the new rules at Radiant Holidays is that the parts in this tube should match the order in which they're assembled. This is one of our older kits where that's not actually the case. You'll notice, let's see if we can change the focus here a little bit. One of the, one of the first parts here are these tall electrolytic uh, capacitors. We will not use those first. Um, that was due to an error someone made in the kit where we had to do a bit of a supplement on there. These are the non-static sensitive parts in one portion. Here in the other portion are all the static sensitive parts in the pink anti-static bags. Uh, we're not going to need the, the static sensitive parts right now so we're going to fold them up and put them over here and put them away. So the first thing you want to do, you want to look at your parts. This quantity says three 330 ohm resistors. Turn the bag over and see, make sure you got three of them. The Questions on the on the first questions people ask me are how hard is this? Well, it's not hard at all. It, it just takes some practice. It takes a decent. Uh, in fact, I'll take I'll take that back. It takes a good temperature control soldering station. It uh, you will see mine here. Uh, this is a a uh, a unit called a CSI station three three DLF from Circuit Specialist. This is the exact station offered in our getting started toolkit. This particular unit has a fast enough recovery that it would even do lead free solder, which is a really, really good unit. Uh, although we do not recommend using lead free solder for any of these works. So PCB has been checked. We know the parts are there. We have the soldering station. The next thing we're gonna need is solder. And I'm gonna see if we can get a good shot of exactly what I'm using for solder here. This is 6337 solder. It contains 63% tin and 37% lead. This particular solder has a diameter of 0.032 inches. Uh, I actually prefer something slightly smaller. Um, 
because many of the parts we use are very small. This is a small one ounce tube, uh, once again, from our supplier and our, and our friends at Circuit Specialists. Uh, it's just basically a tube, continue to pull it out. Uh, in fact, normally it has a little cap with a hole on the top of it. Uh, we have another uh, version here. This is uh, from Kester. This happens to be a 60-40 blend and it is also 0.032. Now, why the difference between 6040 and 6337? Uh, it's a matter of personal preference, but myself and others feel that the, the 6337 flows into a joint much easier and much more reliable than the others. Any 6040 or 6337 solder will do any diameter will do it just depends on how well you how well you control it as it's uh, melting now next thing we'll do is we'll open the parts kit up here and we'll start soldering the resistors <laughs> 